All right, as people gather on this warm summer evening, I'll show you what people are thinking about by clicking on this whiteboard. And somebody wrote, how to sustain beach vibes in the school year. There's a good idea. Here's some others. What have we been learning this summer that we can pay forward to getting students connected and excited in the fall? Um, October 10 to 14. Interesting. Um, write out WP's work. Christina's also doing a course at Johns Hopkins called Digital Writing and Multimodal Composing. Now that's a cool idea. Should talk. I'd love to think about Peter Alba's work in relation to anyway. And now what if we added an online magazine to Youth Voices? This is my idea. Using flipbook tools. Um, I'm curious how we can support each other to encourage our students to be more active in the first draft thinking. Status updates in journal writing. What's new at now comment? Oh yeah, unique homepages. I can show some of that. Oh, here's another one. Yeah. So those are some of the things that we've been messing with, working on. Also, um, um, hopefully Harry and Fred will come and talk about the work they're just barely getting going here. Hey, Janet. Hello. How are you? <laughs> It's only you and me so far, so uh, I think others are coming, but we'll see. Uh, promote the co-host. There you go. You can you can move up out of the music if you'd like to. No, I'm fine. I just want to make sure that wasn't me with my. <laughs> no, it's so. Here's the deal. Um, why others have been? Have you been on this beach before? Okay, so let's take a journey. Come on over here. You got you got to use your um, arrow keys, right? And now hold on, I got to figure out where I am. I'm okay. In, but I can see how many tabs I have. Even oh, I see. <laughs> it's like insane. So I have to find myself again. Hold on. Okay, on. There I am. Okay. Right, come on over here. Small matter, but you you can get other kinds of drinks now. <laughs> oh, look at all this! How fun is this? So on the um. Look at that! I love being on the beach. Click on the bar. Yeah. Do you hear the Do you hear the uh, the ocean? If you get close. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> Is and there, are, these word games actually work, and you can play a game of chess if you'd like. But let me see what what kind of drink do they serve here? These are all just red. Um, there, there are uh, maybe they're not here. Let me keep looking. Oh, how about this? Oh, there's some others here. <laughs> I wonder who designs all this. How fun is that? Well, the more they the more they make it a um, um, social experience where people send them stuff, the better it'll be, right? Um, yeah. And they're starting to do that. But um, somebody has an idea, and, and uh, um, that we need to be able to control the um, objects that you can pick up. So you could you could lay out on a table. You could lay out like three symbols from the short story or the poem, and like. You go over and pick up the one that you want to talk about, and then you could oh, that's find, cool. right? So we've been recommending that to them. Um, maybe, maybe even something simpler, but 
just something that we could we could experiment with the the objects they would be but they need to be but give us the opportunity to do to create the objects do you do you know that you can edit in here or you may not even know that yet you yeah. can too so well. yeah it's okay so go over to edit i'm you're a co-host so you can do this there's a there's an edit um Icon in the lower right. Oh, so you can add tables and yeah, you can you can build your own room. Wow. I right. I can show you some that we built, but um, yeah. nice to see you. Um, I, I I hope that Marina can. She's been working like every, everything, um, and but she's really kind of interested in. Um, she teaches third grade in this elementary thing that I've been stirring up. <laughs> so um, let's see if she shows up and we can talk to her. But over here, oh, here's the other thing. Come on up. I'm showing you the, the fun things first, but I don't know if there's anything else up here. No, nah, it's not much. So you can put video in, you can do lots of things, but there's a whiteboard. Have you seen the whiteboards? I don't know. No. So if you click on the whiteboard, this is where we're collecting ideas for oh. for tonight and into the future too. That's cool. The kids it's not like staying the kids, on. Kids can do that too, right? Yeah, but mine disappeared. Did you? Oh, did did you? Do you have edit open? You do. Okay. Oh, no. How do I undo it? You 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 erased it. <laughs> oh, wait. It's okay. So so yeah, you make it come back. So go go over to activities. Activities? Go over if you okay, scroll yeah. down, um, you'll find the whiteboards way at the bottom. Just drag it and put it around that um, gold message again. There you go. You did it. Now close okay. the edit. Now close the edit. So I quit playing around. Got it. Hold on. Now click on the whiteboard. Okay, hold on. Oh, somebody's been in here. <laughs> there we go. Oh, and then I can type on it. You yeah. got a little array. Oh, this is cool. Uh -huh. And then if you click on the note, oh my, somebody just erased everything. Oh, I know why, because you put this up and you took the other one off. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh no, so I took everything away, didn't I? It's okay. Let me see if I can get it back. I have an idea. Both? What does both mean? So go ahead, play on that. <laughs> There's a canvas. There's both. So both is the canvas? Yeah, but note is where you can type and, and okay. you can, right. Um, let me see if I can get the text that we had in there. Um, there is, there is this problem. <laughs> it's okay. The um, whiteboard. There it is. Okay, I'm going to come in here and on the whiteboard that you pulled in here, which is different than the one we had here. <laughs> so now I've... I'm so gonna, no, I'm, I'm, turning him. no, it's okay. Um, I was able to find it again. And oh, that's good, though. It's because you know students are going to do the same thing. No, I know, um, which is why it's not a perfect solution yet. So um, you got to well, be... Look at this. 
There's like little beach chairs and beach beds and uh -huh. what the heck? Okay. Let me just grab the other two canvas. So tell me about your situation. How have you started already or what are you up to? Oh my to? gosh, we are in full swing. Yes. So Okay. What happened? So I've been applying for different administrative jobs, interviewing and doing things. And because I knew that next year I was not going to be able to, you know, do what I wanted to do. Uh -huh. So um, I was actually interviewing and Pat, I was, the funny thing is, is I went up to pass the Robles to do an interview and then I interviewed online. That had to be in person because Northern California is much more into that. And so I did interview for Chula Vista, which is um, a little city south of San Diego on Zoom. Uh -huh. And the school that I ended up with, very long story short, is um, called Howard Gardner Community School. Right. They are a K-8 one class per grade level. So we have less than 200 kids, um, one teacher per grade level. They oh. almost, um, they fought really hard to keep their charter. They, um, their test scores had gone down for a year and Chula Vista decided this was a good time to, you know, get rid of a charter. That county decided that wasn't a good idea. And so they kept them for five years, which is, which is a mid charter renewal, um, which lets you know, here, hold on, my husband's yickety yakking. I can't hear. Okay. I mean, not really. He's on a meeting, so he's yelling into the computer. Um, so anyway, it's a great school. It's a great opportunity. Uh, it's super needy, super urban, and we are like probably 10 miles from the border. Hmm. A lot of kids, that, families that do cross the border that come to our campus. Um, it's I'm getting to know it, so... It started July, the contract started July 1st. Students arrived last week on the 12th. We have a whole new literacy curriculum, whole new math curriculum, whole new um, everything, whole new SEL, we're using classroom champions. And I am the curriculum co academic curriculum coach. So that's my job. So I'm working with teachers in literacy, in the math, and in charge of all curriculum things. Mm -hmm. um so there's that and it's k through eight k through eight one of each one mm -hmm. of each so it's it's really cool really cool but very small staff um very um i'm just learning so much right now just trying to trying to get everybody think we're doing our dras we're doing our literacy stuff and I, they do have um access to um, seesaw. So there's a couple teachers that have done that. Mm -hmm. Um, but how much, I don't know. I mean, I don't, there's so much, I don't know. Right. I mean, I'm yeah, just, there's a lot of functionality that, 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 that people use that, and they don't use the blogging. Um, and Marina, anyway, I had, I did not get real positive response around seesaw, but yeah. And I, and that's I, a possibility. I, yeah. I went ahead and I signed, you know, we have it. I don't know a lot about it. My daughter loves it, but I don't know. She Is that right? Blog. Okay. She doesn't blog with it, but she has, she's a seesaw ambassador. She, she really oh. likes it. Her husband taught high school sped. He liked it just the way it houses things. It's really easy communication. It's, um, uh -huh. but I don't know for what we want to use it for, if it would work as well. Yeah. Thinking about, you know, so it's what... certainly a place these voices. So I'm not sure how it, blog would work in that way yeah well they have a whole blog on there yeah okay so i'm not going to stress it um we'll see uh what develops maybe there's just some events where you could share things across you know with different teachers oh, yeah. i, I wonder how we can think about it i mean i think there's lots of ways we can connect i still want to be here i mean i all right. I'm really um, going to be encouraging because I want the writing club is going to stay. My kids are not happy. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so um, what do you mean? You're going to work with that club in the afternoons? I'm going to find a way. I'm going to, no, okay. I'm sure there's two teachers I want to recruit that are on campus still. Uh -huh. We had some turn, we had quite a bit of turnover. I, apparently, I don't know who's still going to be back in the fall. Um, 
but there are two teachers that I want to, if they're still there, I want to recruit to come here and, and run the writing club. And, you know, my kids are pretty determined. Now, Julia just graduated. She went to UCSD, took her little portfolio with her. Um, and cool, but a couple of the other ones are, are still there. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I don't want it to die. You know, that's something that I started there and I really hope continues and I hope the students care enough about it to keep it going. Okay. So uh, looks like it's just you and me so far tonight. It looks like it may <laughs> be. Can I can I show you some stuff we've been messing with? Yeah. You, you see that. you see how it fits. Let me start um well, first of all Oh, that was wrong. Did I leave? Yes. I did I didn't mean to leave. I hit the wrong button. Sorry. I was gonna say, wow, okay. He's gonna show me. No, okay, okay. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna share screen. And yeah, let's just do it like that. Now if you remember there's a little box in the lower right, or I don't know if it was um you click on that and your it gets bigger. Uh-huh. Um, okay, and, and I know I'm showing everything right now. Hold on. Yeah, you're showing me. Uh, I'm gonna, there. Now we're going to go to... Oh, it's not what I meant to do, but it's okay. We'll do it this way. Let me, let me get away from the music. <laughs> okay. So one of the one of the things that I've been thinking about with now comment, and you we could do this for your school. I'm doing it for I'm doing it for an entire district district thirty. Oh, wow. So we are creating um, we're creating unique home pages, right? Once you log in, when you hit now comment, you always come back to this page. Um, okay. So we're collecting from last year their their webinars that they did a bunch of teacher presentations so these all go to right um collections um but thinking about like what you want the rows to be and then we're going we're setting up affinity groups and then so there's sel curriculum there's this is a uh, you know uh, somebody else is coming. Um, culturally relevant, sustaining education. Um, let me see who's here though. But so that's one thing to think about. Um, let me say hello to whoever just arrived. Marina hey, came. Marina. Hi, hi there. So you can move over away from the music if you'd like. <laughs> okay. I was just showing Janet some of the ideas around um, now comment that we've been messing with a little oh, bit, cool. and I can um, I'm going to keep doing that a little bit. Um, but you guys should talk about elementary school here in a second. I mean, interesting. So there, I'm sharing again. There's not coming. So the. Um, It won't let me come back out. I, uh, the work that Marine and I have been doing is with um, residents who are going to be student teachers um, in a program called Loot STEM. So we created a home page for them as well. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is, so we're kind of collecting the work that way and, and making it more available. So that's something to think about, right? Um, to to sort of imagine organizing a page, I don't know what for, your school could have one, right? Um, but we can consider that. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it okay. does. Okay. Um, I wonder what else on Youth Voices would be worth showing you. I, well, let me just mention that here's, we have three programs going on. Um, Fred. Yeah, you've been really busy. How's that been going? No, it's fine. 
Um, it's not that big a deal. Um, um, Fred Minland, um, in, uh, how, I don't know how far away he is from you. Where is, um, what's, is it Watsonville? I don't know. It's far. Okay. It's not, so never mind. I think he's near Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. He's, yeah. He's, Anyway, he's, he's, he's working with them sixth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, right? Um, and so, for example, he's collected here, um, Gary Soto's novel or book, a bunch of short stories that he wants them to read through. So, kind of making that easy for the kids to find. Um, and then Harry is um is working on is working in an upward bound program. Um I don't have that easily available. All right, they're they're reading a, a graphic novel that we put called the the adoption that mm -hmm. we put up. Um and his kids are loving that. Anyway, that's that's some of what we've been messing with the um these walls we now call them as opposed to profiles kids can write on each other's walls right um nice. we haven't totally figured all of this out obviously but um still working on um habits of mind here and there oh let me show you this marina look um, this is one of our residents. She wrote this essay, really, um, about the connections between computational thinking and writing. Wow. And then these are her, some scratch projects that she's working on. Um, and then she herself sort of nominated herself for four habits and then right before we came on I gave them to her so the she earned these four habits by doing that work all right that's a good tool for self-reflection too then yeah I think so and then you know we're 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 jump starting <laughs> jump sorry we're starting we're, we're putting trying to think constantly think about keeping the portfolios um, mm -hmm. beginning or starting from the beginning so that we have um, we've asked them to pick three habits of mind and begin to organize their portfolio around those um, and they haven't gotten here yet but when they write their bios this time we're going to ask them to choose those same three and, and tell stories about themselves related to the habits of mind. Okay. So we're kind of trying to sprinkle them in. Now, the thing is with Howard Gardner, he has other things, right? I mean, are you guys yeah. emphasizing those or? Well, that's, that's the interesting thing. So they want to go back to that. So I was thinking that when you were saying that they want to go mm -hmm. back to, I think they've stepped away. So now that I'm in it, I'm they've sure stepped that. away. What do you mean? They, well, they weren't. It's all supposed to be about Howard Gardner, right? And all of his uh -huh. habits of mind and all of his habits of thinking. And there right. wasn't a lot. I think COVID took out a lot. And I think the the past leader, just from what I'm hearing, things kind of fell apart over the past two years. Like I think it was uh -huh. starting to fall apart before COVID, and then yeah. that kind of ensured it. So I think they want to get back to that. That's one of the things we want to study this year: is go back and read Howard Gardner's work, look at some of those things, and do something more meaningful than you know I'm. The examples that they have of the way students could be learning are not super accurate. I guess let's just put it that way. They're not they're not a focus and they've gotten some new staff. So that's a long answer for we want to go back to his habits and his thinking, you know, his multiple intelligences and, and how to how are they we, called intelligences, is that right? I think yeah. so. Mm -hmm. I think so. And it's it's much more and we want to go back to that variety of thinking which is where I, i'm totally staying in this group because they're going to be helping me wrap my mind around that once i get my feet a little bit more 
wet. I mean, honestly, when I first took it over, we got termites. We had a tenth of place for three days. And <laughs> we have a lot of, I feel like we're on Maslow's needs right now of getting getting things set up. And then yeah. by December, I feel like we'll be able to be doing something more critical. Cool. But this is, I like the idea of, and my staff wants ways to connect to students outside of. So that's one of the things I brought up. I mean, we have a lot of new things coming at them, but to be able to, in a very small way, publish in a space broader than themselves, right? That's something that I interviewed on, the kind of this work that we do and what I envision for what an elementary school could look like, a K-8, um, trying to, try not on these voices clearly, but to find well, a space or, or to find talk to, ways let, in which to connect. Let me, let me, the not on youth voices, obviously, let, let's, can we, push against that a little bit um, and ask why? I, and, yeah. I, I think it just depends on if we open it. I mean, traditionally it's been high school, right? I mean, I think I, the topics are, are pretty, especially my kids are pretty intense, but I think I would love it to be connected to that. I want them to be in a broader space. Um, being at a charter, we were we're going to be able to and being so small, yeah. we could have a you know we could have our own little page on there where they can interact with each other. They could interact with others, mm -hmm. on, under a common theme. Mm -hmm. um, we did, for example, we did the first thing I asked the teachers to do was to have them do um, "What's Your Sentence" with Daniel Pink, oh. and so every staff member wrote that, and so I'm putting that together, and we're going to post that out on our page, but. We don't have a place that and I asked every student to write their sentence. And so we're publishing, they don't know this, but it's all going to be published. And I'm going to take photo documentation or however the teachers did this and then post that on our on our blog as the first public writing. They haven't done anything like that where everyone gets to see everyone else's thing under common prompts. And so each mm -hmm. trimester, that's something I want to do. And then doing things that are that are that common theme all the way up. We're using classroom champions, for example, we just signed in with them for our SEL, which is the Olympics and all that kind of stuff with the same kind of common themes. And so I would love to find a way to tie youth voices. So here's um, how, yeah, let me just, uh, I mean, my, the story that I've told before, so sorry for repeating, it, but is that I was working with this, uh, we, we were all working with this fifth grade teacher in Rhode Island, who, um, you know, we were kind of experimenting, could she come on Youth Voices with us? And we were nervous about it. And and we were trying to figure out ways we could block certain pages. And we right. can absolutely do that. We could, we could password protect anything that, you know, you think an elementary school kid couldn't see. And then, and then like the high school kids could know that password, right? Right. So that's that's one easy way. There are more complicated ways. So we were thinking about all this. This was about four years ago. And um, and then she did a project with her kids, and they all wrote about uh, police violence. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, they were publishing stuff that we were blocking, right? Oh, my goodness. And, and so... Yeah, and I don't, I don't get a feeling from this group that they would block you know what i'm saying i i the reason i pick it's a very small school it's a very um there's a lot of issues like i was talking to a student i mean there's stories to be told right so here's an example I, I, mm -hmm. a kid i'm walking down the hall i said hey how are you doing this morning he said i'm really tired and he said i said yeah i said i get that and he said he's up at three to stand in line to cross the border to get to school by 7 30 right by eight o'clock and he's doing that every single day. So, I mean, there are so many stories to be told. So for me, I would start with our middles, mostly because that language That's, arts teacher has both seventh and eighth grade. Let me tell Fred to get away from the music one second. <laughs> hey, Fred, if, if you come over to the right, you can hear us and you won't hear the oh. music so much. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it's just really weird. And I don't know if you saw my face, but I'm, I did this unit um, too far. Yeah. With okay. an archivist this past year. I'm a third grade teacher. 
and we're packaging the unit so we're basically rewriting but we actually use that as the as a lesson for the kids to reflect back on this digit like each kid made their own archive of their own primary sources so i was literally working on that lesson today and how we had implemented it and adjusted it this like and i'm like w watching the videos of like daniel ping talking about it so it's like you're mm -hmm. talking i'm like oh my god like i was just yeah like, we just did that yeah, that's what I did was I put that prompt out to the whole the whole staff and then everybody's yeah. doing something. It's so funny to watch. I, if you all want something funny, I want you to envision me in a TK classroom for just a minute, Paul. Just two days of a pre -K? first grade. T pre-K, TK, we call them transitional kinders, so they're four. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've never heard that was before. In, Fred, was, Fred oh. you're an elementary school teacher too, right? I just wanted to say. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. That's what yeah, we're talking so I about. Was in, yeah. I was in first grade land for two days. Um, I felt like kindergarten cop for sure, hundred percent. Thank God the teacher. The teacher came back. They cheered. I cheered. We all cheered. I mean, coming from high school, a little win, and I just I'm I'm starting to write about it now because I said the, my favorite was he laid on the rug, and so luckily we just got new rugs, and they laid on the rug with him, and we just kind of contemplated the ceiling for a little bit, and then he's my best friend, but. There's so much to learn in there. I I would be love to see some kind of space where the littles could be part of that because they are having those bigger discussions, right? My kids are walking that border. They're living that life literally yeah. every single day. Um, yeah, and if they could write a poem about that or, you know, or, or a anything, journal entry I mean, or something, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of, the, some of the sentences are already really good and we haven't done any work with it yet. You know, I mean, this was just literally me baseline kind of, but everyone has a sentence in them, so, you know. So here's another vision for Youth Voices. And we're going to jump over the uh, problem of getting parental per permission for anybody younger than 13. Um, but we really, really need to get that if we if we imagine this. Oh, 100%. Yeah. But, but just to say, let's say we had that. Um, I would love there to be a space where we could say to the older kids, this is a multi-age space, you know, you know, think about what you're going to write there so that the kindergarten kid could read it too, right? Not necessarily could read it too, but it wouldn't right. get, it no. wouldn't be, it wouldn't be offensive in, in any kind of way, right? So, and I think, I think, Adolescents, I don't think it would limit them that much, and I think they would know how to respect that. Oh, but, I think yeah. anybody on this space would. I mean, to be honest, mm -hmm. writers are writers. I, I, I do believe that because some of my toughest kids were really respect. You know, that may or may not choose to be super respectful outside of this space when they were right. in this space. Were much more cognizant of what they said and how they said it because they're writers themselves you know what I mean? they started to see themselves and i think that's that's my first for this first year together with them is to see yourself as a writer where i'm already seeing having these kids come back on campus the emotional damage that has happened in the past 15 months mm -hmm. i mean it's it's palatable um just kids really struggling to the ones who are already introverts are really struggling coming back mm -hmm. and then the ones like me who could hardly wait put a shot in my arm jump around you know so you've got this like super big energy of kids that just can't wait to be there can't wait and then we've got some kids that were on week two and you can start to see are trying to find their way and I think writing will be the key to that, getting the journals in there, getting getting things in their hands so they can start writing about, not necessarily about COVID anymore because people are, you know, tired of that, but just like this transition of what do we want next? And I think that's, um, there's a great book that I, I had the kids, it's um, Draw a Rainbow or something on the, I, I don't have it because I gave it to a teacher, but the whole thing was 18 artists came together and they drew what would happen next like when you what would you be doing once covid you know once this covid comes out and it's just the way that they drew all these pictures and it's draw yourself a rainbow or two so i can't remember the title so, but i'll bring it next so, week. and the kids start doing that and i think more of that needs to happen and being able to share that with fred or marina and, and having the kids marina, see that yeah i want to hear good marina how how are you packaging your curriculum and where do we get to see it yeah yeah so um the Ar the Rockefeller archive they use um a a e r comment it's an open re open source is that what huh. i don't know what it's called um i can 
I can look it up in a second and, and show you guys. They also put them on, they put their units that we've developed on their website as well. Uh-huh. Um, and I've been working with this archivist, Marissa, for a few years now, and we kind of build units around the prime, about around the primary sources and experiences for um, the students um, that way. And then this is, this is the second one we're actually packaging. Yeah. Cool. That's exciting. What are yeah, the prime? What are the she's, she's been a great resource, and it's great because the kids are as now we're bringing it. I used to teach fifth grade when I started working with her, and we did a we really did a lot of work around like media literacy, and we used like the documents from the War of the Worlds original 1938 broadcast um, because they had done a study on whether or not there truly was panic, um, as the newspapers and were reporting. Um, and then we moved, I moved down to third grade and I said, I think we can do something with third graders. And we did, so. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's, you should show that off somehow. If you yeah. can find a link or two. Yeah, let me, I'm, I'm going to right now. Fred, what do you have on your mind? How are you doing? Fred, Fred's this crazy guy who, who jumped in with us, this sixth, seventh and eighth graders for three weeks this summer. I don't know, that's how I describe you, Fred. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty crazy, but I, I, I'm doing great. I, I, I'm going to move over a little bit. Janet, you'll, can you hear? Because you might need to move. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Now we can uh, hear you better. Coming through okay? Yes, you're yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, th this, is, uh, this is like a, a remedial summer school. The kids are, are identified as um the 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 ones most in need of help and mm -hmm. the wonderful thing about it for me is that it's meant very small class sizes mm -hmm. i am i was amazed that i even took the job because i've never <laughs> gotten along well with middle school kids and it's been remarkably uh effective but the big opening i think for me came out of just pure inspiration i wore my eye patch because i have only one eye and i don't usually wear the eye patch but i wore the eye patch for the first couple of days and it made a nice hook to sort of humanize me a little to the kids hmm. and then of course the other thing that uh, this whole discussion and i'd love to hear learn more about the curriculum packages that you're talking about my dream is to incorporate string games into everything for every level of education and so of course i've wormed in string here even though i'm pretty constrained by these things i'm mandated to do by the district but we still are taking up friday fun day for string games and passing out strings and my dream with the youth voices was to get them to do some writing about their experience with doing string with me because <laughs> all almost all of them have had some string classes before with me i've taught in every elementary school in in the area so at least the, uh, four or five kids in each class of 12 to 15 have already had a a lot of exposure to string figures um but that part has been the hardest to to uh, bring together all right so yeah i mean absolutely very real i mean marina and i have been marina and i have been building these playlists for these residents and um but in my mind, always we're we're kind of, we're every every playlist we build, we're kind of thinking about in a meta kind of way, like how could this be a process that others could use, so we could figure out how to share the curriculum that Fred's. You know, I'd, I'd love to get that string stuff in somehow, and other people, and like things get mentioned, and I want to kind of figure out ways to collect and share across diff different communities you know what people are doing but marina you put something in the chat 
do you want to um, yeah that was just like the that was just that one of the like i said we're we're still like working on the um the digital the digital archive unit that we developed mm -hmm. um so that one i don't have yet to share but the one i did share was um about the media literacy in the world of the war of the cool. worlds so we can look at that the fifth graders but um Thanks yeah, for that. yeah yeah could be like fourth than whoever cool. <laughs> Fred, Fred, do you have Fred? Fred, do you have any um, like any sort of nuts and bolts questions that you wanted to ask about how Youth Voices or Now Comet is working? Like your kids still didn't get into Now Comet, did they? Or no, they no. still are not getting into. What I did today was I just uh, for my sixth grade class, I just read the uh, the fun they had aloud. To well, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was. Uh, uh, you know, and they, did they like the story? Them. It was hard to tell. You know, <laughs> I, I okay. didn't get a lot of reaction. I get it. Um, okay. I got more reaction to telling them that uh, that story was written when I was going into first grade. <laughs> they they couldn't quite compute that, but. <laughs> So, so what difficulty would they have for getting into Nelcom? There's still, I don't see a button. I don't see a link from, and they, they're not, they I don't, don't have the email. The email they don't need an email. Through. Wait, let me, okay, Fred, let me do this with you. Ready? I, okay. Let me share so, screen. I don't quite understand what button you're looking for. Um, okay. I'm sharing screen. Okay. okay. So we're on Youth Voices, right? Right. So we go to Falcons. You with me? Right. Uh huh. Scroll down on the right. There's a big button right here. It says now comment. Uh, I got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it takes you here. Right. <laughs> okay, but wait. Once once you're here, you hit the sign in button. Use the Google button to sign in. Got it. When they do that, they're they'll come they'll come on to this page. Got it. And there's the stories. Great. Okay, and there's the stories. Perfect. Thank I you. I know I know what it's like. You know, kind of, kind of figuring out. Um, can I, while I'm here though, could, I mean, if you have any other nuts and bolts, we can do that. But I wanted to mention, um, especially. Um, we had these the the young people who who would have done this literary magazine on a little while ago, um, the Journals of Color. Uh, but I, but I wanted, to, oh, but they inspired me to think about how we could have a literary magazine on Youth Voices um, right. in the future, and um, and then like it seems to me like you could also imagine working with younger kids to build their own pages and, and stuff like that but so this all this technology exists right here on youth voices you don't have to pay for it all that um and and you can make a um like i'm gonna click here i am sharing my screen am i not yes yeah. okay yeah. so you know the flip book comes up you you open it right so all this kind of we could right. we could we can help them build this right yeah. um so that's that's something that i've been on the back end trying to make happen on the front end we need to work on the front end so harry brake is somebody who when he was in in mexico city for many years i think for 10 years did a, a monthly literary magazine so he said he's saying to me that he'll help make this happen um so that's one way i'd love for us to think about connecting so any ideas what, around that yeah or questions yeah go ahead what about so i'm trying to keep it really simple with a brand new staff that i don't know much yeah. about in week three but what if we did some kind of combined pages I mean, where every school had a page or two, you know, Marina, like I'm thinking we did a common theme 
like do do a topic, you know, make it just like a collaborative book, mm -hmm. a magazine you know, around what's my sentence for, I'm just thinking about off the top of my head, right? And so everybody contributes a page or Paul, are you thinking something else? No, that sounds good. I mean, um, something really simple for them to see themselves as writers. My students right now do not see themselves as writers. They will. I mean, one of the things I want to do is um, go old school and get the paper, the blank books, you know, the blank novel books, and then have them have them each create a book. So at the end of the year, our library is filled with everybody's story. Um, so that's cool. But I wanted, but your virtual way of like, if we could each have a page, I mean, I love that idea. That's a project that would work for middle. I mean, that was a project that would work for our site where I could mm -hmm. have teachers contribute to, you know, here's Howard Gardner's book this year. And here's kids that have contributed to our book, whatever it is that they want to do. That would be a neat thing and a doable way to enter. Well, certainly, certainly um, a lot of people it sounds like you start with identity projects, whether they're right. the way you did it or another way. I mean, the, do you remember the um, boxes where people made, uh, who the teachers slipped my mind around, but the, it was all about like, this is how I see myself and this is how others see me. Um, oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so yeah. some notion of that, like, I wouldn't want to limit it to any, any particular prompt, but I'd, I'd want to keep it a more like identity is the, the thing. And then, however, you know, whatever your circum, whatever your class comes up with, that would be a contribution. Um, yeah. So what they could do is post on Youth Voices, right? And then just, you would just have to give it a category that I want this to go into the identity magazine, right? Or whatever it is. So you, we would identify what that is. And then a group would have to come together and say, okay, here are all the submissions. Let's help put this together, right? That would be really cool. Yeah. That's doable. And it's That's doable great. like across grade levels, right? Right. That's what I'm thinking. It's something that people could contribute to as much as they want. Um, because I just want by the end of the year that they see themselves broader than this teeny tiny space that they are. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, almost, they're just so enveloped about being, the, the community is so huge with them. They fought so hard to stay alive. And I want them to see other people hearing their story. You know, mm -hmm. I think I think it would be really cool. When you were talking about, uh, about cross-grade collaboration, that made me think of the buddy classroom thing that lots of schools do, where you have fifth graders and first graders when that's your widest spread and or you know, or even second graders but have buddy classrooms where they're hmm. there's a goal that the, the, the youngers are going to write a story and then the conclusion is they get oh, to share wow. their book they've made with the mm -hmm. olders so we could do that and, we could do that like with kids from Berkeley communicating with yes yeah from you know across the country like we could have buddy classrooms that are yeah that's an interesting idea and I way, you talked about the, I was just going to say Janet where you talked about old school with with actual books it made me think of that just taking a piece of paper and folding it into a uh, an eight page booklet Right, with the, the tear in the middle, you know, and you mm -hmm. fold it together like an accordion. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a great little. Uh... All right, so. <laughs> All right, I, I'm good with these ideas so far. And what else? What else are you all thinking about? Well, I wanted to ask about video, um, for the, like, like one of the things that came up in the Youth Voices was some of the kids have been able to take their own photo and put it on their profile. Mm -hmm. And I've asked some of the ones who could how they did it, and none of them could explain it or teach somebody else. So, and I don't know. I didn't, you know, it, it's just... Well, we have a, one of those. There is a playlist that has a video that explains it. 
that has a video. Good. Okay. Yeah, but maybe I'll, they I'll, found it. But um, yeah, but that's great. They did. But I, uh, let me check something. About video production is something that I know the, these uh, kids would would gobble up if there were a uh huh a way for them to do some of that. You know, Paul, have you thought of incorporated TikTok? Super short videos, that idea of a short video. Um, the kids are all about that. I mean, I yeah. have already been that. Aren't there some of the short playlist things that PSAs and certain things? I mean, I yeah. Mean, they're, they can do everything, you know? They really can at this point. So it's one, of the, one of the underutilized, let me, I'm sharing again, right? Um, I think I am. So on my yeah. wall, on my wall here, right? Um, if you click on these three little buttons up here on the right, everyone's seeing this. You yeah. can, you, if yeah. you have a video that, you know, you can, you can click here and you can post your video here, right? So that's way easy to do, first of all. Um, so just getting them to post little videos all the time would be a great thing. Mm -hmm. And then those videos go here. Um, now having said that, there are lots of other ways. Oh, those flip books, you can, mm -hmm. you can incorporate videos in those if you wanted to. Um, oh, cool. honestly, it ain't easy, but, um, it's possible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we can do it. Um, we can figure it out. Um, but so there's all that. And then if you're doing a discussion post, right, you can always include videos there too. So I, I don't know if that's somewhat of an answer. I think it's a great answer. <laughs> okay. Um, the, um, the block system allows you to, for example, if, if it's on YouTube, you can just pop it in. But if you, all you need is a, um, if it's somewhere else, if you have embed code, you can, you can, you can put it up. Um, not a problem. Um, so just to say, like, if you could have content here and upload, there, there's en endless possibilities with the, the block system. But I could go on too long with all of that. Um, The um, <laughs> Fred, any other uh, since, since Fred's going to see wait, Janet, do you see kids tomorrow too? Yep. Oh, wait, you're actually teaching children. Oh, so no, do, I'm, I'm not teaching. I'm, I'm you're administrating. you're administrating. That's right. That's but what, it, but right. what I love. This is what makes so, me think about it was having them for a long period of time, right? This is such a small school and those kids stay together for nine years. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, that is cool. Janet, how small is the school? Just out of curiosity. 195 kids as of today. Oh my gosh, that's smaller than my school. When? My when? school's really small, but your school's smaller than mine. No, it's, <laughs> we are like, yes, we're tiny. So it's, a, we have a one, kind of teacher, one teacher per grade level. What, okay. what kind of program is it? It's it's a it's a charter it's a charter elementary school, but it's Howard Gardner Community School. So it's uh -huh. their premise. The charter is uh, multiple intelligences, um, but they've kind of drifted away from that in the charter, and they're coming back to it. So I think we're evolving. Uh -huh. so I, I, what I would say uh -huh. is right now we're we're re, not rebranding exactly, although that's part of what we're doing, um, but. They're really, their focus is the community and the culture. And so everybody, those kids that, that have been there, the school's nine years old. It's a very small um, school, but like I was I was telling earlier, they um, in Chula Vista, California, and it's pretty close to the border. So we have students that cross. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's um, in a very challenging part of town, but the families just want that small community. I know my kid feel, I mean, everybody that works there, it's, it's, it's that way. And so I'm... We're looking to build academic language there and to build a more virtual space. I'm sure he didn't mean to do that. No, I know. <laughs> we'll be back. I, 
That's that's cool, Fred. You just you, you just wanted to get wanted to get your feet wet a little bit, right? I'm just trying to adjust my view a little, and somehow I was scaring away. No, no, no. So, Fred, you you've been in you were involved in a charter school that was a dual language school, right? Yeah, uh, actually, with two different charter schools. One was uh, a two-way immersion Spanish English, where we created the charter only to keep control of our curriculum after the anti-bilingual law went into effect and kept everything else as a public school. Um, and then there's also a charter school for the arts with the whole curriculum focused around the arts that I helped to start mm -hmm. and taught at last year. Um, and they're both examples of the good kind of charter. Right. Where yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a real reason for it. So I don't. I, I want to make sure. I meant to say this earlier, but you know, we've populated the site in lots of different ways with with the sixteen habits of mind. But there's no reason, and and I'm going to do this. Um, you know, Howard Gardner's. How many did he have? Eight or intelligences yeah. by the Seven. end? Seven. Seven Yeah, but I thought he had a, another one. He tacked he, on. He, you're right. He added one. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. there's no reason those couldn't get added too. And and um, oh, no, uh, that would be cool. yeah, so so that you could sort of identify that and give sort of those those as quote unquote badges when people do work, right? Um, but what you need to get next to a teacher who is ready to experiment with you know right. five yeah, kids, and, and we can we can set up a page for your school and and just do some quick you know. Yeah. investigations with somebody. I think yeah. that would be cool. And then my other my other goal is to um, uh, make sure health science has a person that hopefully stays. And so I'm going to be working on that and then the next month to have a teacher take over that space because I don't want to see that go away. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I'm happy to work with that. But it does, I am impressed by how like Marina's kids really need to hear the stories of your kids and vice versa you know i mean it yeah yeah is your, your school is pre-k to eight mm -hmm. so so my school is two um like i said we have a little more we're at like 300 um but i mean i will tell you one thing that we are we are doing um this fall we didn't do it last year but we're doing the global read aloud i don't know if either if anyone here is familiar with it um and i know that you know a big piece of that is connecting with others um and you read the same books together and when i was talking to my colleague in middle school uh before school ended we were we were actually talking about doing an investigation into the picture books and this year the picture book authors are, um, the author is from Mexico City. I know somebody mentioned, Paul, you said somebody's worked in Mexico? Harry, yeah. Harry, yeah, okay. Who's the um, author? I'm looking, I, I want to say his name correctly. It's Duncan. I, oh, hold on one second. But over the course of a couple of weeks, you read a couple of books together, and then you connect with other somebody else, and it could be in the country. Or the country. And um, I know that we're, you know, if we're moving forward with that, um, that might be a really nice way that sounds, for. Uh, that's a nice focus to do it around books. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm so sorry. Let me. Get, well, I, I, we we talk to each other all the time. You'll 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 get the info to me. And we'll, we'll we'll get it. Mm -hmm. We'll get it out. Um, or if I you can find it fast, that's it. good. Um, sounds good. Oh, the the other thought I had, and I yes. we've been wanting to do this for a couple of years now, believe it or not. But Jessica Hernandez Spear, who I work with, um, wants to has has a curriculum around the Day of the Dead, which is a you know culturally relevant, sustaining curriculum mm -hmm. in, in in interesting ways, um, and. It's it's about remembering people who have passed, right? Mm -hmm. And and grieving and but understanding, I think, I mean it's part of what it's about. And 
it feels like a, a, a moment to do that or to give an option to do that. I so, yeah. so focusing, and that's like November 1st and 2nd, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so working together to think about doing something together around that would be interesting, I think, too, with COVID in mind. Not necessarily COVID in mind, but with no, no, but the need to process in mind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think yeah. that's what I'm discovering is so interesting to have such a different lens, right? I mean, you go from high school to especially the group I was working with uh, to a K-8 environment, but they they have this need to connect and communicate but even in these couple short weeks we've been together the adults need that i mean no one's been back on campus for 13 14 months and you yeah it's interesting realize the impact of that when you're standing in first grade and i was like okay i was getting a little frustrated just saying and then i realized these kids had literally only been on campus for 5 months of their learning life I mean, that stopped me in my track. They right? don't I even thought, know what it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. March, March 15th, right? And then you take out all the holidays and this, that, and the other thing that happened before. They haven't been on campus since as a an entity. So they really are starting over socially. And I mean, just a whole, it's just interesting. And I, I, I think such a need to process. That reminds me of a, a, a a kindergarten teacher who was talking about the experience of having a class of kindergartners who had never experienced rain because they were the first class after the seven-year drought and oh. there was no such thing in their in their world as all rain. summer in a day <laughs> by Ray Bradbury. Oh, that's right. All summer in a day. Yeah. Oh, such oh. a such a heartbreaking story, by the way. I know. Thank you very much. That girl, I'm still traumatized. All right. Too many ideas. It's all great. Um, let's keep connecting. Um, okay, Marie. I'm going to look at the yeah. global read aloud this yeah. week. Are yeah. you coming, Are you going to be back next week? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, I've been coming pretty regularly because. Yeah, can take and naps in the middle of the day now for a little bit. <laughs> and the two of you should say, really uh, consider being buddy schools. It sounds like. Um, oh, I think that would be sounds I'm really interesting. Really yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, we're yeah. going to have a lot of constraints and parameters on curriculum and things that we need to do due to the board. But having a space mm -hmm. like that, doing small steps, I'm learning so I don't scare everyone to death. Um, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> having those kind of connections, I think will be great. So I know Paul's laughing because I never do anything small. But, you know. oh, that's, I don't I, either. No. I, I love <laughs> scaring people. It's great. All right. Thank you all. Let's uh, Thanks, we'll talk to you all soon. Bye, bye, okay. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. All right, get out of here. There's a... <laughs> <laughs> There's the, there's no there's no exit door anymore, but but there is there is an exit down at the bottom on the white menu. Oh, there we go. See you later.